<laughs> How you doing, Anthony Ferraro here of Create Sci-Fi. So today is a unexpected, exciting part three. Um, I'm gonna do a part three on the Mandalorian helmet build modification. Um, so a couple things about this. So I'm very happy with this helmet. We did the Ruby's two-piece. Um, but one thing that's tough with the two piece is the seam. And I don't think you can see it here on this camera, but you know, the, the helmet is, is, is flimsy. So it, it just shifted a little and it gets like a little hairline crack. Um, so that I wanted to fix. So I got some fiberglass. I'm gonna put some fiberglass on the inside to solid, make that more solid. Rebondo. But then, you know, I went down the rabbit hole, so went to Etsy. <laughs> and from this one seller, for like uh, 20 bucks, I found these pieces that he uh, specifically modeled to go inside of the, um, the Rubies kit, right? So these will go in there, they're gonna reinforce uh, the helmet even more. And I just like the idea of when you go to put it on, you see uh, something in there. So that's cool. Um, I'm, turns out now that I'm learning more about doing Mandalorian and really getting into the customization, turns out I'm not a big fan of the, of the range finder. Um, it's a classic thing. I painted it, but I, I'm not crazy about that. And then this other seller on Etsy, again for around 20 bucks, uh, offers these um, like antenna. So I got two of these. So I wanna put these on my helmet. Okay, one more thing. All right, so now also with the Ruby's helmet, it, the, 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 the T plate, the, the face shield, um, is like a th almost like a plastic sheet. Now we beef this up by making it darker, but it's still very f flimsy. So there's a seller online, um, I'll, I'll put the URL here, who makes uh, custom visors, right? And this again also was like around 20 bucks, but you know, very thick plastic. And um, this is, this one is specifically, well, <laughs> my microphone's going wacky. This one specifically, uh, for this helmet. So, a little bit of work, but I think it's gonna be worth it. And then we're finally gonna be done with this helmet. Now, um, but this also brings up a point. So when we started this project, the idea was, you know, to get a full helmet uh, on Etsy or like a proper one where you would just have to paint it is around 150 to $300. So the idea was to get the Ruby's two piece, which is around $39 and modify that and, and get the ball rolling. So clearly now that I'm doing all these upgrades and spending all this time, I'm very close to the $150 helmet. But here's my point and you gotta decide what works for you. So for me, I was probably never gonna buy the $150 helmet. I got the $49 helmet, or 39 rather, sorry. And then I started getting into it. And then um, now I'm doing all this extra work. Maybe I would have put this together, put it on the shelf and that would have been the end of it and it would have just cost me 40 bucks, right? So although I am probably getting close to $150, that's what it took for me to, to get in there. And I would recommend based on that, that if you're like me and you've never done any Mandalorian pieces and you kind of are thinking about it, I think this is perfect. If you're already um, a Mandalorian armor wearer builder and, you're, and you've are and you gone down the rabbit hole and you, and you have pieces and you've been doing it for a while, then I think it's worth it to, to get the more expensive helmet. That makes more sense. But for me, um, the other added value of this is now I have a lot of sweat equity invested in this helmet. Like this helmet, even though it's, you know, a, bought from uh, eBay, 
I have so much work in this now, and now that I'm gonna be adding the fiberglass and modifying the antenna and putting in the shield, it really feels like I built this helmet as opposed to just buying an already made helmet that you just sand and paint. So um, I'm excited to, um, I think, <laughs> do the final modification on this. So again, gonna put fiberglass on the inside to make that rigid. Gonna fix this seam again. Gonna add the greeblies, right? We're gonna add the antenna on here. I'm gonna put these ear pieces in there and then um, the visor. Bing, bang, boom. <laughs> All right, so this is the Mandalorian helmet modification part three, and I believe this will be the, the final piece. All right, so let's get cooking on, on this. This is tough to get started because we're just gonna basically tear apart the work that we already did in episode two. So first thing I'm gonna do is just uh, tear out the foam. I'm gonna take out this lens. Like I said, it's just like a flimsy piece of plastic. Uh, make sure to wear uh, breathing protection and, and protective eyewear. So now I'm just going to take my Dremel tool and we gotta get rid of these nubs that um, secure the plastic film to the T-visor. I'm sanding it down here because we're gonna replace it with that heavy duty uh, visor piece that we got from tvisor.com. So now I'm just sanding this down inside here, just trying to clean it up as good as possible before we uh, put the fiberglass in there. And now since I'm in sanding mode, I got these uh, ear pieces that I got off of uh, Etsy and I got the antenna and I'm just gonna hit these with a, with a primer filler and sand those down, get those ready for paint. So now that they're uh, primer, now I'm gonna add the black primer, which is kind of the base coat. But with these little nubs, I need them to match the red in the helmet. So it needs the silver undercoat. And to make that look weathered and damaged and matched, sort of what we have going on with the faceplate, I'm just gonna use this toothpaste technique. So what we're gonna do is put toothpaste here where we want the paint to come off and just resemble uh, paint chipping, which do a lot in the Mandalorian armor. And here's the red that I painted the, the pieces of the helmet with. And uh, off camera, I paint that. So now I'm just sanding down with a little finer sandpaper, these interior things that we're going to be addressing now. And this is just some isopropyl alcohol. I'm just gonna use this to clean up before I do the fiberglass application. I just like using that alcohol because it evaporates. Um, so now we have these fiberglass uh, strips that we're going to create from the cloth. Just gonna create a few big ones, some small ones, medium sized ones, just a little bit of everything uh, so we can get in there and customize that fiberglass dome. So now I'm just putting in one cup of fiberglass uh, resin. That's about enough. Also too, it's easier to add the hardener. It's about 10 drops an ounce. So now <laughs> I'm gonna do 80 drops. A little tedious, but you wanna get this right. Otherwise you waste your time and it's really annoying. Make sure you mix that up good. When you think it's good, just do a little extra. And now I'm going to take uh, the fiberglass and just paint a, uh, a layer on the inside of the helmet before I apply the cloth. And now I'm taking the cloth and I'm putting it in there and I'm just going to take the brush and dab it in there and put a thick coat in there. And I'm sorry I'm not covering this well with the camera. It's just sort of I got into it. You got the dry time and I apologize that was just a bad camera angle. So moving on. Uh, now I'm just taking some water and an old chip brush and I'm just going to remove that toothpaste um, from this piece that we painted. And now I take a paper towel just to get rid of some excess and you see there now it's got that nice chipped look. It's a little bright but we're going to knock that down with the weathering um, when we get to that later. So here's the cured fiberglass that's overnight and that's really solid. So now I have this hole in the side because I'm not gonna use the range finder, it's just a little gap. And I'm just taking a little piece of styrene plastic here. Um, you don't have to do this, but this is uh, just showing you uh, little tricks and tips with the styrene plastic. If you wanna mask things or add things, it's a great way to do that. So now I just got this little um, part there that's gonna fill that hole. And there that is, just glued in and tucked in there. And that was a simple little fix. 
And it's just nice to not have that look of something's missing. I'm gonna mask that off and hit it with a black primer to match uh, the rest of the helmet. And then I just hit it with a little bit of red off camera. And now there's not a gap there anymore. Uh, next, we wanna take care of this seam. I think you can see it there if you look close. And what I wanna do is since it's all secure with the fiberglass now, I'm gonna take the Dremel and I'm really gonna make a big gouge in there so that I can fill up the hole. Before it was like a hairline, so now I just want it to be a wider gap so I have more room to feather out the Bondo. So now I'm just gonna hit this with a, a sandpaper, a lot of sanding, and I'm just gonna prep this for the new uh, application of Bondo. There's the Bondo, just basic Bondo. You get it at a hardware store and add the hardener, similar to the resin. You wanna put the right amount because you don't want it to harden too quick, but it's even worse when it doesn't harden at all. So make sure you mix that up really good. And I'm just going to uh, put a really thin coat on here. I don't wanna put too much. So the more Bondo you put on, the more you have to sand. So now I have that wider gap filled, which is gonna work out better for me than having just that thin crease. So while that's hardening, I'm going to redo the inside of the helmet. So what I'm gonna do is cut out uh, some pieces of five millimeter craft foam. You can use yoga mat, you can use um, floor mat. And what I'm gonna do is uh, redo the inside of the helmet. So now this strip is what's gonna go uh, across the top and that's going to cover basically that whole ridge line that we fiberglassed and just make it more comfortable. Now with the heat gun, you can preform this foam and I'm just gonna make it a little dome shape so that uh, when I glue it in the helmet, it's gonna be a little less work. So now I'm just taking some super glue and I'm putting this piece in there and there, that looks good. And now I'm gonna plasti dip the hole inside. That's that truck bed liner and it's good for foam and it just cleans it up. The ears are still rough because I didn't paint those because that's where I'm gonna glue uh, those pieces we got from Etsy, those mechanical looking pieces. And now we sand. <laughs> But this is the important sanding. This is where we're gonna feather it. I'm using uh, uh, like a 320 grit there, and that's nice and smooth. And now we're gonna hit it with the black primer um, first to uh, show where we have any pits or areas that are troubled. So I'm just gonna do a light dusting here of the black primer. And now I can see a couple areas where I have some pits, and we're just gonna use some basic spot potty. Uh, this stuff comes right out of the tube. Again, you can get this at the hardware store. This dries pretty quick. You're just gonna do thin coats with this. This is just to fill little pits and little divots. So I put that there and I noticed just two other spots. And um, now I'm going to wait for that to dry and I'm gonna go ahead and finally attach this antenna in the back. First thing I wanna do is rough up this painted area so the glue has something uh, to adhere to. I'm gonna tooth it up. And now I'm going to rough up uh, this back side of the antenna. So the glue is gonna go into those grooves that we created and we're just gonna have a better bond. I'm just gonna use a super glue on this and I have the kicker. I really like using the kicker um, when building these things because what it does is you put the super glue, you just mist it a little with that kicker and, and it's an instant bond. Uh, you just gotta take the time to make sure that you're placing it correctly because once it attaches, that's it, end of story. But it, it helps to move things along. So now I'm just sanding off this little bit of spot putty that we added. Um, again, using a fine grit sandpaper because this is going to be the final uh, application of this. You can just run your hand over it and that feels good. So now some more isopropyl alcohol. I, like I said, I like this just because it evaporates as opposed to water, which you can end up with some pooling. And now I'm going to put a new base coat of the black primer, but this time we're not priming. That's actually what I used to paint uh, the helmet originally. So we're gonna lay down a base coat of the black. I wanna try to only cover the area where um, we bonded. So now I'm just gonna take a light sandpaper and just sort of hit the edges of where we added the new paint. 
Now I'm gonna take some steel wool as well. And what I'm trying to do is just blend this paint on top of uh, what we already did. And now I'm going to do a dry brush with the silver metallic like we did originally. And what this is, is you just get a tiny bit on the brush and you're just gonna kiss it. You're just gonna kiss it. Now with the Mandalorian helmet, uh, applying all these new layers and patches is really not a problem because that's almost what you're going for as a look of the helmet anyway. And as you can see there, my seam is gone now. And now by doing this patching, we, we just give the helmet a, a little more life. And now I'm gonna hit this with a clear coat. If this was a pristine helmet, it would probably be, we'd have to repaint the whole entire thing. But this actually feeds into our storytelling of the Mandalorian. So now that I'm dry brushing, I'm dry brushing these ear pieces. And this is a good uh, illustration of why we do that. You can see the difference there. So now I'm just gonna take some black paint and some water, and I'm just gonna do a wash. Um, that happened off camera because my battery died. <laughs> But there you see, everything is matching together nicely now. So now we're gonna put this T-visor in. I'm going to secure it finally uh, with five minute epoxy on all the creases. But to make sure that this is in the right place, I'm just going to take some super glue with my kicker and I'm just hitting the corners just to make sure my placement is correct. Cause I don't wanna be wiggling around with the sticky epoxy and messing up uh, my lens. So now that I have it tacked in place with the super glue, I mix up the epoxy again, like the resin and the bondo, just mix it really good and then mix it again. So now I'm taking a, a disposable brush and I'm just going to paint in this five minute epoxy along all the edges of the visor. We're gonna put a really permanent, really solid seal in there. And you can see that worked really nice and then i had some five minute epoxy left and i used that to attach those ear side pieces all right so now the final piece we're gonna glue in this antenna uh i just sanded those ends a little just so that it would um again receive the glue a little bit better and i'm just gonna use super glue for that and yeah just one final look over before we call it done that looks good, everything matches, and the interior is good, and here's the final helmet. Really like that antenna, gives it an interesting, unique profile. Here's some close-ups, the damage, everything ties together. You wouldn't know that I did some patching on this. Um, again, the, the helmet style lends itself to that. <laughs> That's such a cool looking helmet. <laughs> oh my god so glad i took the extra time with that and now it just feels uh, it feels like a like a motorcycle helmet almost right so we got that new visor in there um added the antenna got those little control panels in the side that really beefed this up and i don't think you can see that we did the fiberglass um and the seam is gone and then you know like some happy accidents i always talk about the happy accidents because these are really battle damaged when i was putting this visor i took that like little chip out of there which really happened and therefore really looks cool right so again went on the journey 39 dollars helmet probably ended up spending about a hundred dollars but as I said in the beginning, I never would have bought a $150, $300 helmet out of the gate. So, you know, you gotta figure out what's best for you. Um, and hopefully, to you guys already out there that have been doing this, this will give you some ideas about customization. Oh, I just really like that antenna. <laughs> Well, I think uh, I'm gonna continue on this journey. I think next I'll probably be making the armor, so stay tuned uh, at some point for that video. Well, as always, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share, subscribe, leave a comment. I love to read the comments, and be sure to sign up for the email newsletter. And remember, I'm just here to help make sci-fi. <laughs>